taking care of our brains, and BetterHelp is a great resource to do that. What? Oh, yeah, because it's fantasy football season. Brunch! Hit it, boys! like brands i'm the last one to throw a brand under the bus q super cut of us being like how's best buy still around yeah. uh but oh man i just had a panera experience and uh-oh famously not a sponsor of the podcast so let's hear it it, well, it was just like a it's it's not even i i, I set that up wrong i like go oh, wait do you see what happened to panera no i just panera was just extremely sad tables not working like one employee a lot of rotten tables kids. not working tables not working like what did it have three legs i don't know how many legs it had but i had to i was on my way over here i want to organize some notes for the old pard thought all right i'm gonna bang out a quick off the hour get in there get me a cookie I don't even think I got a cookie. No, they didn't have cookies even. Sad. That is very sad. I mean, I feel like Panera is one of those things that, like, it, you kind of move past Panera, like, once you graduate college. But Panera's young, man. No, it's Pan not. Yeah, Panera's only been around. I remember when Panera opened. Yeah, but Panera Panera's got, like, hard years to it. Like, Panera's been through some shit. I'm not really sure what they've been through. Well, they might, they may, like... They may a lot be. Of city miles they may on be. It. Yeah, they may be young in age, but like, there's there is some like depression in there. Do you remember when Panera first opened? I remember people being excited about it. There was this new chain bread company. Awesome! Mm -hmm. It was the '90s. We didn't know that you're not supposed to eat bread all day. Famously, look up the fucking the the food pyramid thing. D yeah, it's, it's like 600 pieces of bread, bread trash, have some water <laughs> and just have all, all the food pyramid said was to eat bread all day. So Panera opens. Great. You can get all these different types of bread. I remember I would go like my friend's parents would take us. We just go. I don't even know if they did sandwiches back then. We just go get some bread. So they would just give you bread like like un un like cured pieces of bread with like your sandwiches you'd get like a sandwich and it'd be like okay and here's some side bread that is true a bread was a side i was into when they started doing soup that was a thing yeah that their french onion soup was i was gonna say good but if you chunk french onion soup what did are they doing? invent the bread bowl that's a good question they could be on some taco bell shit yeah. where taco bell famously invented the hard shell tortilla. Oh. Crazy. That's like uh, some Bobby Valentine shit. He Except invented the, the... Here's the twist with the Taco Bell thing. They actually Taco did Taco Bell actually <laughs> yeah. did it. I don't know. Like, I always... I've never thought to go to Panera. I went there because Starbucks was closed. Apparently, Starbucks ain't keeping... Uh, yeah, the, the, the Starbucks down the street has some weird hours to it. Yeah? Yeah. Um, but Panera does have, like for lack of a better or i guess this is a perfect term it there's got some like depression baked into it i mean it had some depression when i was in the house yeah uh, i if we're talking about like depressing uh chain. brands yeah. yeah like chain brands panera's gotta be near the top i think subway might be like the most depressing chain brand but you know my theory on subway right you'll probably disagree with it subway never tastes bad because the only time you eat Subway is when you're so Desperate hungry enough. that you'll eat Subway. Yeah. And did you ever do like construction or landscaping or any job like that? Yes. Any like yes. like actually I, taxing I, job? I worked on a railroad for a summer. Okay, so that's a ta you you'd been working on the railroad all the live long day. That's right. And when you get that lunch break, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what your order is, what you get, putting food in your mouth. You know the the amount of times, dude, that I would eat sandwiches with like mayonnaise on it. I hate mayonnaise. Won't go near it in a normal setting. But when you've actually had to work like a human being, anything tastes good. Uh, like any patron inside a subway eating a subway sandwich is like the equivalent of Jimmy McGill in the desert drinking his own piss. Yeah, it's just for sustenance. But it's for survival. <laughs> Friend Subway the, is for survival. Friend of the show, Jim Murray, is a big... 
proponent of their tuna fish sandwich. Ugh. And I'm not a tuna guy no. either. He has this order. He says, you get it with this, and you get it on this bread, and you get this certain sauce, and he claims it's one of the best sandwiches you can get. And that man knows his food. Everybody, but every here's the thing about Subway. Everybody that goes to Subway has like, oh, yeah, Subway sucks, but here's, how here's you my sandwich. Yeah, yeah, here's my Subway hack. Uh, famously, recently, it turned out that there is like nothing in the tuna fish. Yeah, not like not real tuna, but just it's like not even real bread. Actually nothing. It's it's like tire rubber tires in just, the bread. There they they showed that the nutrition facts were nutrition myths on that thing. And Murray was like, "You think I thought I was eating good things when I went to Subway? <laughs> Don't care. It tastes good. But what would be? I'm trying to think of good thriving happy brands." Oreo is at the top of my list. If you follow any of Oreo's social stuff, mm -hmm. it's bright colors. It's happy people. It's like people jumping up and down. There's a new flavor. By the way, we're already getting to the point where people are complaining about pumpkin spice stuff. It's, it's happening. Well, it's just it, it's, it's coming. It's yeah. I mean, it's happening and it's and it's unavoidable. But I I do feel like they put they they just do it a, a week earlier every year. A week oh, yeah. earlier. But they've done that with everything. That was Halloween candy at first. Then it was, I remember back in the day, it was like, oh, they're already putting out Christmas cards. It's like people were monitoring the card section and getting upset. So I don't. Who I, cares? I, yeah. And honestly, if I see pumpkin spice Oreos or something, I haven't had those yet. So I'm probably going to try them. Here's like my, uh, I know that it's not going to work logistically, but here's my, uh, my proposal. Is that like okay? If you want to release it now or like a week earlier every single year, that's fine. Leave the summer stuff though. Like that's my only concern is that like when it's a hundred degrees and you no longer have like the summer refreshers on the menu, but you do have pumpkin spice latte. I have a question. Why is why are pumpkins associated with the fall? Do they only grow in the fall? I would think that they should have everything they need to. I know that a lot of things in, are seasonal, but... I, I mean, I would imagine they probably can grow during the summer, but given the consumer supply and demand chain, they're probably not growing many pumpkins during the summer because who the fuck is buying them? If there was a iced PSL in the summer, I bet people would go for that. I, I'm surprised that there isn't one. So I, I'm, there I'm has not, to be one, right? I'm not getting any answers on this. People are at, I, I googled it. A lot of people are asking this question, but I'm not seeing any answers. It's All not. the answers are like, uh, in the fall, you can use a pumpkin to make a jack o' lantern. <laughs> and I'm like, don't fucking play games with me. You know what question I'm asking? Yeah, give stop, me a stop ducking the question. Give me a real fucking answer. Oh, yo, you can put demonic faces on a jack-o'-lantern. All right. Problem solved. <laughs> I guess that answers it. Pumpkins were once thought to cure snake bites. Why do we have pumpkins in the fall? This is from a... Pumpkins were... I would like I'd like to know... Oh, there's pumpkin trivia. That's where that came but from. But I'd like to know the origins of like that, uh, that theory or that myth. The, they were once thought to cure snake bites. Until the one Somebody poor bastard, and died. yeah. Until the one poor bastard that was like, "It's not working. This still sucks." They were testing them on guinea pigs, and the snake was like, "I I can just swallow the guinea pig." And they were like, "We weren't able to finish that experiment. <laughs> it might have cured a bite." All right, and the guinea some... pig was like, "Yo, I am not a hamster. Please fuck off." Yo, that's that big K McKinnon energy. Uh, so here's the from the wit and wisdom section of this landscaping website on pumpkins. A uh, slice of pumpkin pie before bedtime may help you sleep. Fucking cool! Like, Putting may in any sort of like yeah, right. or fact is some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. We got to come up with like a very random, like very random theories that. May be true, but you only know if you try them. Did you know Tommy Lee may be president <laughs> soon? Who Speaking knows? of Tommy Lee, my man just straight up posting dong on Instagram last week. I was, I was out on that whole thing. I didn't. I I didn't sit this one out. I I checked it out. Oh, I checked it out, but still looking pretty good. Good for you, Tommy. 
at that no, I mean not not to to crunch numbers here, but that's cumbersome. Well, yeah, I mean like that's like no, that's that's no good, right? Like that's excessive. Yeah, yeah, and excessive not like oh too much. Like it's like that's no good. I, I mean, I'm sure it's good for some people. It's it's more of like a spectacle, the, right? <laughs> yeah. The main spectacle is how is he allowed to just post a picture of his dick on Twitter? Well, he's not. It got taken down. Oh, he got taken down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's like um it's like a, a Chevy Suburban. It's like. That is way too big for most of like general society. There's but some like, hey, cool, ch- check this out. Ex- some people are going to be into it. Yeah, and right. Within a year, you're going to be looking up cash for clunkers. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You're gonna be like, how can I trade <laughs> the this Kelly thing? Blue Book value on yes. that is going to be not so great down the line. <laughs> All right, pumpkins have been known to grow in uh, North America for almost five thousand years. Pumpkins are a nutritional powerhouse, exclamation point. That's this not is some true. Shoddy That's trivia. not true. Uh, There's no way that pumpkins are, are like, hold extreme nutritional value. This, oh, no, I, I bet they would. No, probably not. The pumpkin spice stuff is only good because it's sugar. N- yeah, no, I'm not saying that it tastes great. I'm yeah. just saying that, like, it. Do- pumpkin is not put in a lot of stuff. If it had incredible nutritional value, wouldn't it be in more shit? I don't know, you got to go get a pumpkin. It would be funny if, like, yuppies were going out and getting pumpkins the way they get avocados. It would be very funny just to see, like, the like at, like, some bougie-ass restaurant, there's just full pumpkins sitting on, yeah. like, the counters back there. There's, like, some, uh, the bear shit where they're trying to prepare <laughs> something. Like, chef, I need two pumpkins fucking yesterday, <laughs> chef. The the guy, like, the, the salesman, like the around. salesman who rolls up in his sprinter van at the front of the store just, like, opens the back and just pumpkins falling out. What the fuck is this? I needed 30 pumpkins. The order sheet just you, says 10 pumpkins. You only paid for five. I need 30 pumpkins. I don't know. I'm just delivering them. How much does a pumpkin cost? I've bought them before for, like, decorative purposes, but, like, they're not expensive, right? Boy, I've been... Uh, this is such a timely topical episode. Uh, I have been out on the pumpkin buying experience forever i'll get a pump i'll buy a pumpkin yeah and i'll buy some ice (laughs) and i'll buy some milk and i'll buy some sugar i'll even buy some of the finest coffee beans Mm -hmm. get that all thrown in there what else would be in a pumpkin spice latte cinnamon maybe yeah depending on uh how you like to dress it you know about that historic week i had last year What's that? I just sucked a PSL every day. Hell yeah! Good it was, for you. I was <laughs> thriving. Was you know what we should? You know what we should do? We should get like we should get pumpkins in bulk, and we should just paint them all like the minions in suits in tuxedos, and like just gentle minions. Yeah, gentle minions, yeah. and then just like put them in front of everybody's house. Just because give them just, no like, choice. Would figure that they're gonna do that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> That's a favorite. great idea. Like the Halloween fairies. Like <laughs> yeah. here you go. We did your pumpkin. And they're like, oh, I, uh, does it have to be? If it were gentle minions, that'd be weird. But if we just put up straight up minions, <laughs> they would have no choice to. It would be like the shitty present that you get that you can't return because it's kind of on the right path. Yeah, and you'd be mean if yeah. you took that back. I don't hate that. I don't like having a jack-o'-lantern, by the way. I don't like anything that's going to attract any sort of rodent or child or... <laughs> it's one and the same. Rodents, yeah. children, basically the same. I mean, if, if like a, a rat's going to eat it or a kid's going to want to see it, out. Okay. I'll tell you what, though. I'll make a, I'll, I'll make a pumpkin for my nephew and your two nephews but i I, i'm not trying to put up the big hoopla thing i am into halloween decorations uh yeah i mean like halloween is a very fun uh very fun season uh it's i I, i'd put halloween above thanksgiving honestly i mean halloween was always my favorite holiday and there was probably some bitchy contrarian in me that would push back on everybody saying that Thanksgiving was their favorite holiday. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, but I mean, Thanksgiving rocks. I'm not the biggest Thanksgiving guy. I've made. I just don't love Thanksgiving food. My family's really small, oh, and I so love. I mean, I I do love me some turkey. You know, I'm like a massive stuffing head. 
cool. Yeah, so that's a day. <laughs> it's not one of the things that I would like dis- use to describe you, but members I'm happy of my family <laughs> who see me at Thanksgiving would dis- would use that to describe. I do me. feel like, for the most part, there's like part of adulthood is taking four to six years off from Halloween and then getting back into it. That's definitely where I am. I was going to say, I don't think we've done like Halloween videos and everything. I don't think you and I have ever been to like a Halloween party together. No. Or got, uh, we, had, we went out one year. Yeah, we went out. You were Burt Reynolds, RIP. Oh, that's what I was like. So we've actually done two Halloween. Things. What other are you thinking about? Uh, we went to a baseball tavern with Carabas and. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was I a was, long time ago. This was like the first week of brunch. I was. Yeah. Uh, Right shark, how topical or how clever was that? I think that not the left this shark. was legitimately like the first week of brunch because we were like it talking was where we about came up with like, like the toxic masculinity type right. deal. We didn't have a term for it yet, but we were like just talking about how hot some actors were. Yeah, and it was like if that... people aren't going to yell at us for it, and that's what everything was back then. Like. If my job isn't going to yell at me for being too silly, uh, I'm very cool just making the podcast talking about whichever actor we were saying. is like we could get an hour out of this. Yeah. And that's what birthed the Hot Guys and Weatherman episode. Yeah. So that was a good time. Uh, But yeah, uh, I'm like back in on celebrating Halloween, not in like the trick or treating way or whatever, but will be pretty cool uh, with my nephew. Yeah. Getting to do that for the first time this year. Um, But like. Celebrating Halloween, the season with like movies and shit. Like, yes. I'm excited about that. You have you done Nightmare Before Christmas yet? I have. Yeah. Okay. I did it last year for the first time. I explained Danny Elfman to a younger coworker the other day, and I felt like I was 600 years <laughs> old. But it was nice. It was a little educational thing. He was saying that he watched a show where there was a character named Oingo Boingo, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, Oingo Boingo was Danny Elfman's band," and he was. Like, oh, well, this show actually does stuff with, like, music. I forget what the name of the show was. It actually sounded pretty cool. Fantasy football season is coming up. And these days, when I talk about daily fantasy, I'm talking about that daily scoop of athletic greens that I've been sucking. I started taking AG1 because I historically have treated my body poorly. Bad eating choices. Not enough exercises. Shoes that are too small. The best way to make good decisions is to start the day with one. For me, that's one scoop of AG1 and eight ounces of water on an empty stomach. I've been doing it for a few weeks now, and I love it. Considering all the greens that you're getting, it's a completely tolerable taste. Think tropical bubblegum grass. You definitely do get the grass thing, but it's not. When you think of green drinks, I know what taste you have in mind because we've all had to do those things Mm -hmm. before. This has some sort of extract or something that is overpowering. Well, I mean, we we've if you're watching this on video, we're on video now, uh, available to everybody. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but if you're watching us on video, you just watch me for the first 15 minutes of this episode drinking down some AG1. It was the slowest uh, I've seen anybody uh, suck AG1. I'm sorry, I just like to f- I like to savor it. He so was I was I was drinking the the AG1, and you did not hear me gag or complain or like moan about how bad it tastes because it doesn't taste bad it tastes good in fact we are famously not a moaning and complaining (laughs) podcast zero moaning podcast ag1 it doesn't taste bad you gotta believe me with one delicious scoop of ag1 you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food source superfoods probiotics and adaptogens to help you start your day right The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All of the things that, quite frankly, you want. Is it pricey? Nah, I don't think so. Costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. You want that cold brew, still get it. I'm not a person who's going to knock, uh, this is the thing that you're doing every day, but for comparison to put it in context it's just grabbing a cold brew yeah i'm stop by don't cut back on your cold brew usage stop buying so many pumpkins that might cut be down it. on your pumpkin buying now, we got to do the drill tweet where it's like five dollars rent twenty dollars electricity and utilities pumpkins. seven thousand dollars pumpkins 
somebody please help me. My family is dying. Now I know what you're thinking. Does Athletic Greens have over a thousand five star reviews? No. Because Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. That's seven times the number that I just put in your head. It's recommended by professional athletes. And in 2020, AG purchased carbon credits that support projects project protecting old growth rainforests. They are doing everything for you, for the world. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash brunch. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash brunch to take ownership of over your health, and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. We've expired in the Better Call Saul department, but in some ways, we're just getting started. We are just getting started. Uh, Saul is over. It's done. Very, Forget about it. Very, very uh, disappointing. Let it go. Very, very disappointing. Move on. <laughs> people, don't, people don't forget. Don't say it again. If you say... If you mention Saul the rest of this podcast, I'm going to complain and moan. <laughs> Stop living in the past. Get over it. We're in the black and white times now. We're <laughs> past the days of Saul. We're now entering Gene. If you've ever seen Arrested Development, rest in peace, Jessica Walter. She, she We lost her a, a, a few years ago. But uh, a couple of last Saul observations after. Did you watch it again? I did not watch it again, no. I banged it out again. I watched half of it last night, half of it today. Man, uh, it may contain spoilers because it will. We didn't talk once about the finger guns last night. No, we didn't at all. Because we knew it and we saw them and everything. But damn, I was like watching Kim's hands to be like, was she, she maybe going to make them? Come on. But yeah, Jimmy gives her the finger guns and she's like, not the maybe time. Later. Read the room, pal. <laughs> but read the. Uh, read the prison yard, pal. I would have loved if they showed her last. They showed Jimmy last, and then they show her kind of her vantage point of like walking away. And he's... I loved the way that they they that final shot though, where yeah. he goes behind the wall or yeah. the, the whatever the fence it was. Yeah, it, it was awesome. He's just like a dog watching their owner leave. Yeah, like maybe he'll come back. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but Breaking Bad ended with Walt. And, like, the most important thing to him, which is the lab and all the meth and all that shit. And he's just kind of walking around taking stock of it. I love the Better Call Saul ended with Jimmy and Kim. And it probably always was going to, but not necessarily. Think of what we thought going into the final half of this season. We were like, when does Kim die? Or yeah. when does Kim go? And once she's gone, is she gone? We got the sense when she left. They were going to have to do, because of how much time they left, they were going to have to do a Kim episode. But even with a Kim episode, they didn't need to end it with them coming back to each other all these years later. Not even all these years later, by the way. It goes to show you how crazy Breaking Bad was, that all that happens in, like, two years. Yeah, and, like, the shit that, like, when it goes south, it all happens very, very quickly. Yeah. Shout out Maurice Schrader. Shout out everybody who participated in the... At the post game show, which we had so much fun doing, and such a good part of it was all of your participation. Mm -hmm. We loved that. We've said that we're going to keep it going. We do have a more kind of concrete uh, explanation as to what we're going to do. We're going to continue the weekly streams. They will just be for Patreon. I know that we opened these up to Twitch because. We wanted more people to participate, and we wanted to steer more people to the Patreon and to anybody who jumped on the Patreon as a result of it. Thank you very much for participating. But for these, they will be for the Patreon. They'll be on YouTube, but you'll need to be on the Patreon to get the link, which brings us to the Brunch YouTube. Get on there. We've uh, invested in populating our YouTube with some of our content. So, for example... In this episode, we're going to talk about bodies, bodies, bodies. That will be packaged and put on YouTube as 
a review and we're just doing that pete's wanted forever to stock the youtube and it's kind of we just focus so, on doing things the way we've done it but yeah i mean like it's gonna to, to put peel back the curtain a little bit uh i mean we've said this at different points in the podcast before uh but like we are investing in growing the podcast yeah and doing things more uh efficiently and really like kind of like taking it seriously and and kind of like not treating it like a business but not doing, doing anything right <laughs> right uh we've we've previously discussed uh like you know doing things and making more content live forever on youtube and live forever on tiktok we're on tiktok now that's right like we're doing instagram reels with content so uh we've we've we're going to spread the content around a little bit more and i think youtube is going to be a big piece for us full episodes are going on youtube uh we're opening that up to everybody for free before you had to be subscribed to the patreon on the ten dollar tier we are going to I believe we're going to leave the $10 tier and we're going to do exclusive content for that tier, but the full episodes are no longer going to be locked behind that tier. Yeah, and there's research behind that. Quite frankly, it's not super common for people to watch full episodes of podcasts on YouTube or on video, and it's great for the people who do, but we'd rather give you something that more people want and still have you with that option. Uh, we're not taking on all the work all ourselves. We are uh, investing quite a bit in making sure things are <laughs> done the right way. So we brought on uh, my coworker Spike, who is incredible. He's been cutting any of the videos that you or any of the good videos that yeah. you've if seen. you if you've noticed some of the videos are shitty those are the ones that we're better doing. call Saul <laughs> videos have been have been me uh things that like reels and stuff have been spike and he's awesome we could make this a spike episode if we wanted to but uh he's going to help us with a lot of production stuff he's knows how a lot of this stuff works what we love about him is he's not just hey here's how i can edit this he's Here's how I can edit this. And also, have you thought about positioning it this way so yeah. either more people will see it? He so is an idea ideas guy. He is an execution guy. And he is a, like, for more or less, like, business guy. He is an analytics guy. Or an guy. incredible grifter. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Wait for the update in two months where we're like, yo, Spike took all our money. We hung Please out with him help. yesterday. <laughs> and uh, after, we were like... I was like, yo, did I tell you or did I tell you? Wow. We, we don't know anything about any of the stuff he's talking about. But uh, yeah, the and the story there is we're not going to be buying as many <laughs> hockey jerseys <laughs> with the Patreon. Unfortunately. Uh, we're going to. Well, we could. if Subscribe to the Patreon. Like, yeah. If, you, if, you're, if we got a ton of Patreon subscribers, we're still buying hockey jerseys. Yes. And paying Spike. And honestly, so there's a $5 tier. There's a $10 tier. I kind of want to make the tagline brunch. Just give us five bucks. <laughs> like if you want to give us 10, that's great. And we love everybody who does support the podcast. And I know a couple of times we've said, or not a couple of times, every episode we push you to the Patreon, but we uh, have kind of put our heads together of late and have actually thought like, okay, what do we bring to the table? What are like, please don't make jokes about this, but like, what does Pete do well? To help a pod, a podcast, what can I do to help a podcast? What are Spike's skill sets? All right, let's come up with a sensible division of labor and a way to make all this work financially. We want, if you listen to the podcast, to say, "Hey, look, this podcast I was telling you about. Here's them talking about this movie, and you got a YouTube video to show them or whatever." Yeah. And does is this reinventing the wheel? Not even close, but no, it's we're like us we're like eight years behind yeah. on like what podcasts should be doing. We should have been doing this like years ago, but it, we're second here. Second best time to plant a tree was eight Seven years, years ago. ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, the best time was eight years ago. Uh, so that's that. Uh, we'll do a stream this coming week, just like we've been doing. Obviously, 
they've been about Better Call Saul so far, but we do have the post-game show format that we're going to do, certainly with your honor. Yeah. When it comes back for season two. We're considering just doing a rewatch, though, and doing that anyway, because something that's gotten great feedback from listeners and from us after we do episodes are things like Your Honor, A Teacher, shows that are... Perfectly imperfect. Yeah, that are combinations of like good, well done, well acted, whatever, and either uncomfortable, tough, insane, whatever. They give us content, so yeah. we have that format. There There's, are show, there are those shows like those perfectly imperfect shows are incredible podcast fodder because oh, like yeah. we're we're looking forward to them every week, but for fucking insane reasons and we're like rooting for them to go off the rails do you think a tv show could do content about our podcast and they we'd be perfect for them <laughs> that's true what if there was a tv show with like good actors and their thing was that they listened to brunch that would be the exact opposite of what we do with kind of weird tv shows uh and that's not all though there's also uh we have a kind of fun listener participation driven format that we can do for streams as well really we were just like high on all of you guys jumping in there saying funny things giving us stuff to go off of in the better call Saul stuff also making a lot of good points like that somebody pointed out in the patreon yesterday jimmy was actually slimy went had gone right over our heads but Really good. We appreciate you so much. Get on the Patreon, patreon.com slash listen to Barnch. Now a word from our sponsor, mm. BetterHelp. Uh, BetterHelp. We talk about BetterHelp quite a bit. Better call Saul, and I was going to hurl this at you. <laughs> That's right. We've, we're leaving that in the past, but what we're not leaving in the past, what we're doing for our future our is taking care of our brains, and BetterHelp is a great resource to do that. What? Oh, yeah, because it's fantasy football season, and you, you can't manage a team if you're not taking care of yourself. Like, they always say that about taking care of your mentals, is that you're only as good as... You're only as good at managing fantasy football teams as you are at managing your, uh, your own personal well-being. Tell so, them. if you want to take care of your mentals, if you want to get a therapist, BetterHelp is a great place to... To start, or if you're a, if you're a therapy veteran and you just need something that's easier uh, or more accessible, maybe your therapist isn't currently working for you. Try out BetterHelp because they will match you with a uh, a therapist that is best for you. Uh, BetterHelp was literally my entry into therapy. It was the first place that I went to um, to to take that first step and. I got to say, it was awesome because they match you with the therapist extremely quickly. I believe it's like within 48 hours. Ten yeah. yeah, yeah. That's more or less 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, 48 hours, I believe. And if you don't like the therapist that they match you with, they'll get you one pretty quickly. So uh, BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anybody on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. Uh, you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. So if you want to get into BetterHelp and you want to take care of your own mentals and get 10% off your first month, go to BetterHelp.com slash brunch. Uh, our listeners, once again, our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash brunch. That's BetterHelp.com slash brunch. Go take care of them mentals. You kids want a movie review? I can't hear you. You kids want a movie review? Bodies, Bodies, Bodies from A24 and director Helena Rain is the spooky tale of a group of rich 20-somethings playing a party game that turns deadly. It stars Amanda Stenberg, Rachel Sennett, Maria Bakalova, and famously, Pete Davidson. Mm. Peter, this is a movie that portrays a lot of stupidity and throughout the first maybe... Two thirds, three quarters of the movie, I was unsure as to whether the movie itself was just stupid. <laughs> when the reveal occurs, though, it takes the movie from a potential mess to potentially, and I'll even say probably, the smartest horror movie you'll see all year. Wow. 
That's you now. You're just throwing out lines for the YouTube, you're just throwing out real, real buzz buzzword lines. Uh, so that's now the headline. You the smartest, the smartest uh, slasher you'll see all year, dude. I've I was just last five minutes. I've been pro as fuck. You are not wrong. I do like though that you said that like oh once the reveal happens like it happens very quickly in the movie you're like once that happens you're in. The reveal happens like in the last two minutes of the movie, so you are sitting with the stupidity for quite a long time. It is marinating for about ninety minutes. But you don't know. You don't know though if it's stupid. You you oh, know you, like this is oh you know it's stupid, but you don't know if it's intentionally stupid. Right. That's right. what I'm saying. So you're like I'm about to find out something big about this movie. It better be worth my while. And as I was thinking, should we spoil this? Uh no. Okay. I don't th- I don't think we should spoil it. Um I will say uh, one of my complaints is that I did not love the pacing. It felt like it took too long uh to to get to where it wanted to go, but man, it it did really stick the landing. It stuck the landing okay. incredibly. Uh there's like a, a a twist at the end and it's worth it. Uh the twist/reveal slash reveal is very smart and it does paint the movie in a completely different light. And it is much easier to look back on it and be like, that's hilarious. So did you like it? Uh, I did like it, but I didn't love it. I would say that it's a it's a very it's a very unique and current take on slashers. And I really enjoyed what it was trying to do. I don't think it was perfect in its execution. I think that like maybe a more experienced I don't know like what the experience of the director is. First time directing okay. an English movie. Okay. So I would say like a more experienced director would maybe be able to have a tighter product, but it was really enjoyable. Yeah, it's for sure heavy handed in its commentary mm-hmm. on kids these days. So essentially these rich kids are playing a party game in their rich friend's mansion, and the lights go out, somebody dies. It's a hurricane party. It's a hurricane party, famously. And they're bored in the house. Bored you know in the they house, were bored. bored in the house? Bored in the house, bored. As uh, our friend Tyga tells them throughout the, the, the movie, they're doing TikTok dances, and the big song they kept keep doing is bored in the house. I've listened to that song a hundred times since, by the to way. To be fair, though, like they were never bored in the house. They were always doing shit they in the They were house. mainly concerned with how are these people dying? Who's kill <laughs> who's the killer? Why does everybody keep dying? Yeah, I mean there was never a point in the movie where they seemed bored at all because for the like the first however many minutes they're just doing every drug. They're doing every drug. They're drinking like crazy. Drinking they like are fish. they are rich kids that are partying like very rich kids. And then people start dying and they're trying to figure out who is dying or in like and, and, and <laughs> they, they know who's dying they're they're trying to figure out like who the killer is no they're trying to figure out who's dying oh like what like when some like who's next and yeah like, what, yeah okay what's the rhyme or reason because there's like a, a final there's like a final destination maybe theory conspiracy going on at, at some point the, the party game they're playing is like uh somebody's the quote-unquote killer mm-hmm. and they're trying to follow all right so if this person died in real life does this mean this person's going to die. And as I said, it's definitely a commentary on kids these days. But it's interesting to see if you drop kids these days in a traditional kind of horror movie setting. And that premise of they're playing a party game, but suddenly things get deadly. That could happen in the 70s. That yeah. could happen in the 80s. That could happen in the 90s. They're dropping the most 2022 <laughs> Hyper Twitterized <laughs> <It's>, podcast <laughs> yeah. enriched kids into that setting. And to say hijinks ensues is to sell it short because all of it, none of it seems how do you do, fellow kids? And none no, of it seems no, get no. off my lawn. No, none it, of it seems it, MAGA. It, it, if they like focus grouped it and they went through like, here's everything we want for, for to like represent Gen Z, they hit every checkbox. Like they had like, like, cringy woke speak they had yeah. <laughs> uh they had um like tiktok dances they had um 
depression references and like Xanax yeah. uh, references. Like they're all they're doing all kinds yeah, of cocaine, drugs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they doing. Uh, there was like one of the girls had a podcast. Um, oh, yeah. it, there's a lot of uh, a lot of Gen Z shit in this, and none of it. Well, like some of it does feel forced, but forced in the way that it would be forced the, by Gen Z. That they would force yes, it in yeah. there, and that's not to. That, I'm not judging Gen Z. I don't even know what fucking generation I am anymore. But uh, you mentioned one of them has a podcast. That is the character, I believe Alice is the name of the character, yeah. portrayed by Rachel Sennett, of whom I had never heard before this. She was great in this movie. And she stole the show. She was great in this movie. She was awesome, and she has one of the... She has possibly the best line of the movie, uh, which it shouldn't be funny, but as they're dealing with some like really heavy stuff and dealing with different things and trying to figure out like life and death stakes, she says, uh, I've never told anybody this, but I have body dysmorphia. <laughs> and the context, the context in which she yeah, says the context that is important there because like very funny, in a, like in a vacuum, obviously that's not funny, but, uh, the memes that have spurned from that, I, if you follow her on Instagram, uh, she's been sharing hilarious memes people have been making. My favorite one, it's the uh, couples dancing meme. Oh, they don't know I have body dysmorphia. It is, uh, <laughs> just like a horrible picture of her just dropped on. <laughs> they don't know I have body dysmorphia. That's amazing. Which, again, like when I say it's a smart movie, if, if you make that line funny in 2022 yeah. – I mean, there are something. there are a lot of like there are a lot of very funny lines, and you know who else is very good in this movie? Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson yes. is very good in this Famously movie. Famously not good in a lot of stuff, but I'm happy for him. Here's the thing, and like we've we spent a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to figure out Pete Davidson's deal, and like, <laughs> is he overrated? Is he even funny? Pete Davidson is at his best in movies. Like it's it's a thousand percent. It's, way above anything else that he does way better than saturday night live it's way better than his stand-up and like just I, I think like pete davidson is a funny actor and he is a good actor you know what pete davidson should be doing the john bernthal thing we're just, just like, like showing like, up for five minutes in the movies seventh lead in because i would say he's probably like the fourth or fifth lead in this movie and this is a movie not full of a listers, a lot of up and comers. He's the biggest person in this movie. Yeah, he's got to be the most famous person. Yeah. In this. I mean, although unfortunately, he could be in a movie with like, with like John Travolta right now, and Pete Davidson would be the most famous person because he's just a celebrity. Um, Maria Bakalova is famously uh, in Borat, subsequent movie film where she had a weird interaction with Rudy Giuliani. Okay, okay. You know she's that person? No. <laughs> have you seen the Borat subsequent movie? I have film? not, no. I saw the first Borat once. Those movies aren't for me. Yeah, I think that I've that ship has sailed in my life, me, want, me wanting to watch that. Um, yeah, I mean, like, this movie, it, you've probably figured it out by now, but, like, this movie just features the worst people. Yeah. And it's... <laughs> Which is not a shock uh, for a slasher because usually slashers, part of the formula is including some really terrible people that you are slightly rooting yeah, to like, see die. This one's got to go. This one's got to go. Yeah. And a fun little thing is to just make all of the characters that so that you're kind of just like left rooting for nobody. I feel like that's happened more often the last few years, though, where definitely they peel away we were talking uh off the air about this where like really starting with get out where the final girl is like the bad guy mm -hmm. where the, the final girl thing is more or less over yeah so the obvious okay well this person is clearly going to be the last one standing i had no idea who's going to be the last one standing because there is some unreliability to well this person seems like they're the good person, but I don't know. They, they're killing people every five minutes or, like, locking people out and leaving them to die. Well, so. they're all the worst. They're all fucking unhinged. So trying to, like, whittle it down and to who... Young. Yeah, right? So it's like... So they're automatically The process shitty. of elimination is very difficult because it's like, oh, this person is also shitty. So uh, talking about the, the final girl phenomena uh, the other day, 
we kind of came to the conclusion that bec- maybe because of societal shifts recently that like the final girl phenomenon has shifted into the final guy phenomenon because like now the uh, everybody's consensus is like yeah guys are really shitty and like the worst and and you a lot of twist we'll have a guy live <laughs> yeah. it based more or less yeah and, and like now it's uh like the the guys in like these these newer movies are like okay they have to prove themselves to not be like the worst and once they do that maybe they'll live i uh, pretty much every character in this movie though is is the really worst. fighting to prove that i mean it's it's not hard to be the worst to not be the worst in this because just don't be as bad as everybody else but tell you what they they have a tough time Pete Davidson Pete Davidson's character is really intriguing because he is simultaneously the worst but also maybe the best yeah because he his uh he plays both sides of the fence for sure and i mean his thing is they don't tell us a lot about a lot of the characters so with Pete Davidson you get what his deal is right away. Okay. Like he's extremely jealous. He's probably dated, uh, other people in this friend group. It's his dad's house. He's freaking out about whatever. Some of the other characters are just kind of portrayed as, well, they're house guests and they're party and they're having a good time. And because it's a horror movie, you don't really ask questions because as you said, like most characters in horror movies are fodder to be killed. So you're like, okay, well, whatever that character might die in a few minutes anyway, but they don't fall off too quickly. A lot of them last a while, and it's enough for them to have these insane arguments and be horrible to each other. But I liked it. I was uh, I'm, I'm on Letterboxd, and I was thinking, okay, this is probably going to end up somewhere in the like maybe three, three and a half. Yeah, I, uh, I put it at three type of range. I ended up giving it four and a half. That's crazy. High. Which I, w- I would, on Rotten Tomatoes, I think it's, I'll just check. Um, I think it's in the 80s. Uh, well, it's an A24, so like starts off at an 80. <laughs> yeah. 89. 89. That's that's very high. Uh, so I don't like that my, uh, that my four and a half makes it a 90 because I really feel more like 88-ish. And yeah, it's a, it's I, a real I st- feather in its cap. It's a nice reward for its final act. But yeah, I, I still, I still think that's really high. I would like maybe put it at like a seventy-two or something like that. I, I'm at a three star right now. It has the possibility of shifting to three and a half star. I got to sit with it a little bit, but I think that's as high as I'm willing to go. Three sounds like you hate it then. No, it, it's that's not like that's a. Uh, I know that it like equates to a sixty, but yeah. it's not really how I view it. I feel like three stars is like above average to good all right how about my four and a half means that it's 90 for me and i don't i want to be an 88 can i give you my two points and then you give it a 62 yeah that's fine with me all right yeah well that's body trade that's uh bodies 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 uh what else you want to do uh what else we got um oh part of football part of part of my uh part of my experience at the theater uh, today oh, yeah. was finding out that the AMC chicken tenders are back. Yes. They are back. Apparently, USA. apparently, I did not realize this. They went away because of supply chain oh, issues. Yeah. I did not realize that. There's oh, a yeah. chicken shortage going on, uh, apparently. Yeah, it's because of a combination of labor staffing issues in production plants and... Because frozen chicken is in just way higher demand because you know who has a chicken sandwich? Popeyes. Everybody. True. So, But Popeyes sh- is the only one that matters? No, the Popeyes one, not you, for me. Shut up. Not, dude, if, if, you, if you got to sauce your chicken... That, I've heard that take good, from Mackie and, oh, come on. It, it doesn't matter. What matters is the way that it tastes. It, if that works for you, I mean, it's... It's not a true. They, it's not a true spicy chicken sandwich yeah. because, like the, it's not baked in. It wasn't born spicy. It wasn't born spicy. It but, just put on a spicy coat. Yeah, that's. I mean, <laughs> but you can still look hat. fucking good. Yeah, you can still taste fucking good if you're wearing that spicy coat. All I know is, just because you put on a Red Sox hat, that don't make you a Red Sox. 
Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. It absolutely doesn't. It makes you a Red Sox adjacent. It makes you dressing up like a Red Sox. So, and you're being real toxic right now because you're saying you got to be born something to be something. Well, you just got to be something to be something. It, yeah, wearing a spicy well, coat makes it, you spicy. Wearing yeah. a spicy coat makes you spicy. Right, but some people might want somebody who has a spicy tattoo versus just wearing a spicy coat. Yeah, but Spi- uh, uh, where having a sp- having spicy Chick-fil-A. tattoos makes you spicy all the time. Yes, like you may you you may take off that coat that spicy coat and not be spicy anymore. But when you got that coat on, you are spicy, and there's no debating so that. So your selling point for the Popeyes spicy chicken sandwich. Is that you can't uh, say it's not spicy. Maybe sometimes it can not be a spicy chicken sandwich. <laughs> That's what makes it such a good spicy chicken Fucking sandwich. Fucking versatility. The possibility that it doesn't have to be the thing that it wants to be. No, I, I don't I don't and I hope that we can't roll back the tape and find me being like, fuck the spicy chicken sandwich from Popeyes. I'm glad that people like it. If that's your spicy chicken sandwich of choice, cool. The reason I don't like it is because I'm not a mayonnaise person. I'm a sauce person, but I'm not a mayonnaise person. And if you need to put a spicy mayonnaise on something to make it spicy, I'm probably not going to like it. Mm. It's not. It's just not for me. I do love the Chick Fil A one. Obviously, love the Wendy's one. Wendy's one goat. I'd love to experiment. Maybe get that brioche bun from Chick Fil A and toss the Wendy's sandwich in the middle. Could be like a real thirteen dollar day, but. Uh, yeah, but the AMC chicken tenders are back Yeah, and there are, apparently they're new. That's what I was told by the guy at the, the register. He said that they've got a new recipe, a new recipe, but here's the thing. And this is a little bit concerning. Uh, it took 15 minutes to, to make them. And he said like this, we got like a new recipe and a new way of cooking them. And it takes 15 minutes. Low and slow. <laughs> Right, <laughs> slow baked it fucking falls off the bone. You're like these are chicken tenders. There should be no bone involved. And they like, taste oh, just trust. And me. they literally taste exactly the same. <laughs> they taste They're still the same. Just like Werther's Originals. <laughs> That's insane. They're still baked like 400 degrees about above where they should be. They're still very dry and very uh very crispy, just the way we love them. There's there's real like no. They didn't mess with perfection, even though they apparently did. It just takes a little bit longer now. So I had to I had to get there. I, luckily, I did get there a bit early today, and I got the tenders right before the movie started. But you kind of got to, if, if you want to get tenders now, you have to allot that time. Yeah, and that's tough because people have caught wise. They know that, or I, I hope everybody knows, it's 20 to 25 minutes after the start after the yeah. listed time so people aren't showing up leaving themselves 15 minutes to spare if i got a three o'clock movie catch me rolling in at three twelve at the earliest yeah, right. and then i'm leaving myself time to do whatever i need to do i still catch a couple of previews it's all good 15 minutes though you better be delivering to that seat yeah yeah uh, I, I, they don't or they didn't today because in order to deliver to deliver to the seat, you have to order through the app, mm-hmm. and I did not do that because I I just didn't anticipate. I guess you could prepare and have them deliver, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just glad they're back. I don't yeah. care how long it takes. I will show up ten minutes early to get those tenders. Uh, I'm very very glad. Uh, no disrespect to the Impossible Nuggets, but extreme disrespect to the Impossible Nuggets. They stank. They overrated. Yeah, give us that. Actually, I don't even know if they're overrated because nobody said they were good. Yeah, I was gonna. Say, yeah, it's tough. And also, they like weren't the Impossible Nuggets. Remember that time that I ordered them, and the guy was like, "Oh yeah, by the way, these aren't like the real Impossible Nuggets." What? Yeah, he said like they're like phony ass Impossible Nuggets. Man, what kind of? There's no loyalty there from their so that their employees are just turning on them yeah. The strangers <laughs> yeah they're just like revealing confidential information they what i they, be... they tip me off to that they're not real impossible nuggets got tipped off to the fact that they got a new recipe new uh new baking scheme or whatever um but amc i would not be using my i would not be giving that guy my credit card 
if he's gonna spill on his employer, it's what's true. He you do? don't know. You don't. That guy is a, a, a famously bad at protecting secrets of the brand. Just major con artist. But the brand, nice guy, the brand is making good decisions recently. Number one, the tenders are back. Number two, you know what else is back? Oh, uh, Nicole Kidman. Nicole re-upped. Kidman. Yeah. Nicole Kidman. Hit that story a few weeks contract ago. extension at yes. AMC. Locked up. How do we? I don't think we've ever discussed this. How do we feel about the Nicole Kidman intro? Uh, I discussed it at work, and there wasn't much of a reaction from anybody else. And I was like, "It's the most important news of <laughs> the month." I no, I loved it. I, I love it. I, I think that's the suit that she wears is positively gangster. I think Nobody would wear that to a movie, though. It would be so nice to. I think about it all the time, though. What if I rolled in there? Actually, that, she like, might have worn that to uh, the premiere of Minions: Rise of Gru. She would have been such a good gentle minion. Yeah, she just sitting there with the soda and popcorn, not. Not touching either of it. Doesn't want to be rude to the other people in the theater, even though she famously got that theater all to herself. It's dope. It makes me happy. I like watching that more than I like watching any sort of, don't talk on your phone. Don't ruin the movie. It's like, please. I know you're not even talking to me. I'm not going to ruin the movie. (laughs) Some of these other brats are, and they're not going to listen to you. Just give us Nicole Kidman, please. I've been waiting for for the right time to use a... a somehow heartbreak feels good in a place like this and have it be like a screenshot of the screen and then photoshop something in there oh okay. that would make it I was funny gonna say, people do the, no people do yeah. do it but like i i want to wait for the right time to bring that meme into the brunch universe nice i do i don't know how to feel when i see it memed because i want to check with them like how often are you go into the movies right this you, might be stolen valor. You have to you have to be an A list member to be able to to meme that. Here's a question: Do you do get in the A list exclusive line? Oh yeah, you, I can't do it. It's like too bougie for you. You feel too elite. I feel elite if there's like two people in line in the normal line, and I've got pre, and I'm just motherfucker. I, I pay for this shit. Yeah, I don't know. I've line etiquette's tough. Like you never want to be the. I don't want to be like I'm better than you, but like I'm if if AMC wants to tell me I'm better than AFC, you, right? Yeah, if you were to ask AFC, I think I'm better. Yeah, like I'm not. I'm not saying personally that I'm better. I'm against this. I don't want to be doing this. Listen, it's now if you'll just wait back there. Well, I don't want to be. To- I don't want to be toxic, but AMC is telling me that I am more important than you. So take it up with them. Just give me them. Them. Chicken fingies and be good. One other element of uh, update. We have a brand new clothing line available oh, on the store. Right. As promised last week, there is the Cape Cod Sucks merch on the podcast. Want to get ahead out of it immediately and say, I know that this was birthed from me saying Cape Cod Sucks. It, it just sucks to me. I don't think it's like people from there aren't bad and whatever. Enjoy it. A lot of people love it. If you like Cape Cod, please support this endeavor and get yourselves a nice Cape Cod. Sucks. There, it, one of the best things about this line is that we're dropping a summer line in the middle of August when back to school, uh, back to school shopping ads are starting to pop up. So really a credit to us for evening the balance like if you're upset that you're seeing all these end of summer back to school type of ads we're here to make you feel better and be like whoa hold on you can take those pumpkin spice lattes and put them on hold because here is a summer merch line for you in the middle of august it's just beginning i love that i think we should take that one step further i think that this fall we should just keep the party going (laughs) we should keep doing summer stuff hell yeah a lot of a lot of like beach picks a lot of uh a lot of frisbee, a lot of going out on boats. I think we can do it. But we can't, you can't, we're not going to go to like Florida and California to do it. We're just going to keep the party going. Summer is just getting warmed up. Yeah. So please pick up one of our Cape Cod Sucks merch lines. We've got plenty of, uh, plenty of cool Cape Cod style sweatshirts. Different sizes too. Different sizes. Only one color, I believe. But yeah. If you want to like put it in the wash and turn and like do hot water, it could make it smaller or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to like throw some bleach into the wash, some tie dye, 
you could fuck with it. It's 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 yours to fuck with once you get it. Once you but get it, it's yours. No just buy it. Piece. Buy some Cape Cod Sucks merch because we're building a new studio. Uh, we talked about the YouTube earlier, but we're building a new studio. You see this new look that we've got right now. It's better, but it is temporary. Temporary. So we are building a new studio. So very excited about that. Go to the Patreon. Join up on the Patreon. Um, join the YouTube uh sign up for better help drink ag1 stop being toxic don't kill your friends at hurricane parties because watch your mouth <laughs>